Hi, this is Dennis Surgent. We're starting part three in a series about value stream mapping with subject matter experts. This is where we begin to talk about how to map the actual process with the subject matter experts who've been exposed to the first two parts of this, at least in print form and in a verbal form with them as you begin the process. You can see that we've got this arrangement of color by color by color. We go through one color at a time to depict the process in blue, to depict the issues and roadblocks that occur in red or pink. We go through in a third process of this to look at the ideas for improvements in yellow. And then last, we look at the ideas and the activities in terms of values and volumes. We want to know what the actual numbers are where possible, and we use estimates where needed. This is where we ask the subject matter experts to use blue sticky notes to identify the process steps. It's important to remember that verb noun construction is critical for depicting the flow and the action in the process. We ask that they write the first action that starts the process on a sticky note. Only one member of the team needs to do that. And we ask them to post it at the near upper left of the map. We ask them to also write the last action that ends the process on a sticky note similarly, but post it at the far upper right. And then we ask them to fill in the gaps with the most important steps that occur between the first and the last step. What's done is most important who does the work is not important at this stage. Blue decisions are an opportunity for us to take the same sticky note and identify a decision by just turning the sticky note on the side at a 45 degree angle or thereabouts. This creates a decision in the flow. Labeling the yes to the right connects it to the next step and it indicates progress or flow in the process. Where we label no to that yes or no question is where we connect it back to a previous step, or sometimes we create a new process step that comes before the next step of progress in the process. Once we string together the post-it or sticky notes in order <clears throat> with decisions in this verb noun structure, we want to make sure that we think of this and review it with the participants as this is the happy path of their process. This is the way 80% or more of their process flows. We ask them after they've got the sticky notes on the board or on the wall of ESOL pages, we ask them to rearrange the steps until the subject matter experts can agree that this generally depicts the process. And after we do this, we number them left to right and take a photograph or a picture. This is in case those sticky notes come unglued. Our next step is to take pink sticky notes, give a set of them to each of the subject matter experts to identify problems and roadblocks. <clears throat> what we do here is we ask them to write whatever the issue or the roadblock is on the sticky note and post it underneath the appropriate location on the map. We ask them to line them up directly under the tasks in order and number them with a number that matches the steps they apply to. Once we've got this done, we take a picture. With the issues and the roadblocks added, the process takes on new depth. We can see where roadblocks occur. Our next stage is to move on to the yellow sticky notes. This is our opportunity to use yellow sticky notes to identify ideas or suggestions for ways to improve the problems or eliminate them. This means that there's typically a one-for-one -one relationship between the pink and yellow notes, but subject matter experts may have different ideas or multiple ideas for improving problems or eliminating them. We ask the subject matter experts to imagine for a brief while that they're the kings or queens of this system with no restrictions or limitations, and we ask them to remember that they should not edit themselves or others. 
Once we have the ideas added, you have additional depth of detail. You can see not only where the issues are in the process, but you can begin to see where there are ideas and opportunities for improvement that have come from the people who work closest to the process. With respect to this next stage, we use green sticky notes to show what are the volumes and values in numbers and words. The subject matter experts in this group can use estimates of the work times until actual values can be determined. It's always wonderful if they bring them in with them. It's important too that the team needs to reconsider the mapping process as they think through what are the values and volumes, they will sometimes change the process, but we wanna make sure that their thinking is supplemented by getting actual data. If they have to make an estimate, it's very useful to get the actual data where it's available. It's also important for them to be sure to number the steps in these sticky notes that they document so that if we lose one, we know where it goes in terms of sequence. We have several ways to think about the measurements of process of values and volumes. We always wanna make sure that we're thinking about the volumes per year and the process time by step and by the entire cycle. It's always important to include delay or waiting time. It's also important to include lead time if there's some processes that have to go on before you can proceed to the next step. We urge people to not try to use all of these measures, but you can see a list here, which I will not read to you, but you can look at them in the slide deck. And I ask you to be careful to document your operational definitions so that as you use a number, everybody understands it with no questions. Once we have the values and the volumes added together, we have an opportunity to have ever more detail. And this is where a process map becomes a value stream map. It's built into Excel so that we can then capture the data in a tool that will help us analyze where the first opportunities are for improvement. Now that we have captured this level of detail, it's time to go back to the ideas for improvement. We ask the subject matter experts to group their own ideas by effort and impact into this kind of quadrant matrix. We ask them to think about, is it high impact or low impact? Is it high effort or low effort? This is an opportunity for the subject matter experts to make up their own mind about their own idea. And at this first stage, to prioritize them in this quadrant. We think about those that have a low effort and high impact as a first priority and to be acted on within a week. Affinity grouping is an opportunity to further prioritize those first level of priorities. We will cover that separately. So think about the data and the information gathered from the process and the organization. We talk about high priorities are things that should be acted on within a week. We talk about medium opportunities as something that should be acted on within two weeks, and low priorities would be things that should be acted on within four weeks. All of the input and the ideas should be saved for later use, and we want to make sure that we take pictures of everything the subject matter experts have created. Next in this series, we'll talk about how we digitize the value stream map in Excel. Even with estimates only, we have a first iteration of the value stream map, and we can now capture the picture of the process and the data about it together in a format for broader use. I want to thank you for your interest in this program. We hope you'll continue with the learning videos that we're putting together. The slides are available to you at no cost. We'd like to have your questions. If you have any issue that you want help with, feel free to call me or email me at 517-285-5500 or the email address below. Thank you.